The invention of the atomic weapon changed the course of humanity. Luckily, these devices were only used twice in combat to help bring an end to a global conflict, but the most disturbing facts were yet to be realized. Even after seeing the devastation these bombs left, we wanted to push the boundaries and make even more powerful weapons. We did so without having a full understanding of what we had created. So, in the decades after World War II, we tested bigger and more powerful weapons. Sometimes, these tests were done in reckless ways that posed serious danger to human lives. From five men standing directly underneath a nuclear blast to the accidental contamination of entire islands, here are five nuclear tests that were way too close. On July 19, 1957, five brave soldiers volunteered to take part in a test involving a nuclear detonation. On an area of ground about 65 miles northwest of Las Vegas, these five men made a sign that read, Ground Zero, Population 5, and hammered it into the ground beside them. Directly overhead, two F-89 jets came flying by, with one dropping a nuclear device. After a brief pause, the countdown started. Then, at 18,500 feet directly above the five men, the warhead exploded. Yes, all five of these men volunteered to stand underneath an exploding nuclear warhead. The only person there who did not volunteer was the cameraman who filmed the men. They were taking part in a test to demonstrate the relative safety of a low-grade nuclear explosion in the atmosphere. This test was done at a time when the public was learning about the dangers of nuclear fallout. So, the Air Force wanted to reassure people that it was okay to develop atomic weapons as a deterrent to a nuclear-capable Russia. The five soldiers involved in the testing were Colonel Sidney Bruce, Lieutenant Colonel Frank P. Ball, Major Norman Bodinger, Major John Hughes, and Don Luttrell. The cameraman was George Yoshitake. Did they survive? As of 2010, Yoshitake was still alive. The rest have passed between the ages of 63 and 86. The cause of their deaths have not been tied to the explosion. However, it is assumed that the explosion didn't have much of an effect on them due to the relatively small size of the bomb, 2 kilotons, and the high altitude of the explosion. Sadly, the true effect was felt in the nearby town of St. George, which was hit with some fallout. Residents were forced to stay inside for long periods of time as to minimize exposure. Because of this event, and others on this list, the US government has paid out nearly $813 million to more than 16,000 people affected by nuclear tests. In 1963, the United States, along with the United Kingdom and the Soviet Union, signed the Limited Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. This treaty, among other things, prohibited nuclear weapons tests underwater, in the atmosphere, or in outer space. It did, however, allow underground nuclear tests as long as no radioactive debris fell outside the boundaries of the nation conducting the tests. A few years later, in 1970, the Bainberry test was set to take place at a Nevada test site. A 900-foot hole was dug and a nuclear bomb was lowered into it. The goal was to measure the power of an underground detonation. As far as the bomb itself, it was relatively small, being only 10 kilotons. The explosion was meant to be in accordance with a limited nuclear test ban treaty, keeping unwanted fallout contained. However, things did not go according to plan. When the bomb exploded, a crack in the earth opened up around 300 feet from where the bomb had been lowered into the hole. From this crack, a huge cloud of radioactive dust and vapor burst out and filled the sky. After rising nearly 8,000 feet into the atmosphere, fallout spread over parts of Nevada and California. Although very few civilians were exposed to the radioactive fallout, many workers at the bomb site were. According to early reports, the radiation they were exposed to were within established safety limits. But two workers who had higher amounts of radiation poisoning contracted leukemia and died. Subsequent investigations showed that although the government was negligent in the incident, they were not liable. So the families and the widows of the two dead men never received compensation. 
In the early 50s, before the drafting of the Limited Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, the United States conducted many nuclear tests in the Pacific, specifically around Bikini Atoll, which is part of the Marshall Islands. On March 1, 1954, a nuclear bomb known as Castle Bravo was set to be tested. This test was the first in a series of tests on the new type of bomb called a fusion bomb, also known as a hydrogen bomb or thermonuclear bomb. The new design allowed for different nuclear material to be used inside a lighter and smaller aluminum casing. The detonation of that bomb was the biggest explosion ever up to that date. Within one second of detonation, a fireball formed measuring 4.5 miles across and was visible from over 250 miles away. The crater left by the explosion measured 6,500 feet in diameter and was 250 deep. To simplify it, the explosion was about 1,000 times more powerful than each of the atomic bombs dropped in World War II. It is still the fifth largest nuclear explosion in history. Unfortunately, the United States was not expecting such a large explosion. As a result of the blast, more than 7,000 square miles of the surrounding Pacific Ocean was contaminated, including some of the small surrounding islands. All of the islands were evacuated and remained vacant for over three years. In 1957, the islands were deemed safe to return. But they found that the natives' food sources were either gone or contaminated. Many became ill and the islands had to be evacuated a second time. The explosion became an international incident as the fallout spread small traces of radioactive material as far as Australia, India, and Japan. Some particles even drifted to the United States and into Europe. The test prompted calls for a ban on atmospheric testing of nuclear devices. Operation Plum Bob was a series of 29 nuclear tests conducted between May 28th and October 7th, 1957 in Nevada. The series of tests were to evaluate and perfect designs and principles for warheads that would be mounted on intercontinental and intermediate range missiles. However, there were other things that the military wanted to test that were much more controversial. Scientists wanted to understand the effects of radiation on a biological scale. In order to study these effects, they brought in over 1,200 live pigs to be the subjects of experimentation. In one test, pigs were placed in cages and were dressed in suits made from different types of material. The goal was to see which materials would protect better. The bomb was detonated in a relatively close vicinity to the pigs. Although most of them survived the blast, many suffered third-degree burns to over 80% of their bodies. Soldiers were also subjected to tests. Over 16,000 members of the various branches of the military participated in exercises which involved a large maneuver through radioactive hot zones. The scientists wanted to measure how soldiers would perform both physically and psychologically in such conditions. Nearly 3,000 of these servicemen and women would go on to develop leukemia later on in life. In 1946, the United States conducted a pair of nuclear tests at Bikini Atoll called Operation Crossroads. The purpose of these tests was to study the effects of nuclear weapons on warships. The two tests would be delivered in different ways, with the first bomb being dropped from a bomber and the second bomb being detonated underwater. A series of full-sized dummy ships were scattered throughout the water, ready to take the force of the explosions. The first bomb, named Gilda, was released from an aircraft on July 1, 1946 and detonated 520 feet above the fleet. This test, however, was a big disappointment because the target point was missed by nearly half a mile and the ships took less than the expected amount of damage. The second bomb, named Helen of Bikini, was quite the opposite. It was detonated 90 feet underwater, and the blast was quite tremendous. Radioactive sea spray produced by this bomb caused a massive amount of contamination to the ships. Only one of the ships was able to be saved. The other eight had to be scrapped. The thing that made this operation controversial was that it was one of the first tests in a long line of tests at these islands that caused immense amounts of fallout. As previously mentioned, inhabitants of the islands were relocated for years, with no idea of what was happening to their home. 
To this day, the islands still remain almost completely vacant. There has been a lot of collateral damage in the quest to understand nuclear weapons. But therein lies the real question. Are we being responsible by pushing the boundaries of force we don't fully understand? If you enjoyed this, click the link on screen to check out the five largest nuclear devices ever made. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.